So just as the last chapter in Unit 1, you might have felt to be kind of technical, the whole laws of motion, but they're important to understand the laws of motion so we can understand um, beyond Earth's orbit what's going on. So also we need to kind of dig into things like light and um, things like the atom here in a minute. Um, so just bear with me because this is setting up the stage to um, kind of explain how we know what we know. So uh, what you're looking at here is one of the things that Newton saw. If you take white light and send it through a prism, actually the white light is broken out into what we call its components, um, all colors of the rainbow. So honestly, kind of hiding in that white light is um, all colors of the rainbow. But light is only one, what I call cousin, or one form of a type of energy is called electromagnetic radiation. So all of those radiations together, just like we talk about light spectrum, all of those radiations together are called the electromagnetic spectrum. So I have kind of a busy slide here, maybe. Okay, um, and it's kind of got um, rows going on. So I, I, this semester I'm, I, I like the word cousin because visible light is one cousin Okay, and in related energies, all forms of electromagnetic radiation. So check this out. I know you've heard of these energies. So kind of getting, and can you see how the, the squiggle actually is important? The squiggle is what we, does it look like kind of a wave? Okay, so this, this, the squiggle is rep, trying to represent the wave, how big that wave is for that particular cousin. So we have visible light, okay, getting a little bit shorter, ultraviolet, x-rays even shorter, and gamma rays the shortest in what we call the wavelength. So let's look at cousins with longer wavelengths. Okay, after visible, longer wavelength is infrared, microwaves, and ra radio waves. So these are all different forms of electromagnetic radiation. Okay, so let's talk a little bit about the squiggle. Okay, that squiggle actually has a discrete distance. Okay, how long is one squiggle? And you can already see over here that gamma rays have a, have a shorter distance, okay, between squiggles or waves. Radio waves have the longest distance. So what you're looking at here, by the way, um, how long a wave is, we usually use the, the, word, the symbol lambda, okay? And lambda, you kind of make a, make a long line like that, and then you go and make an upside down V. That's lambda. So these are wavelengths in terms of meters. So you may not be real familiar with 10 raised to the negative 12th power, but just to kind of put that in perspective, that means you have 0 0.1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 1, and units are meters. So that fraction of a meter, okay, is how, how wide a gamma ray is, okay? Um, let's compare that to down here. Okay, radio waves, how long are they? Well, 10 raised to the second power is what? 100. Okay, that is crazy. So this next row, I think this is pretty cool, um, it actually tries to kind of put some objects that are that size. Starting down here at radio waves, it takes perhaps a football field um, to get one complete cycle. Okay, how long, how, how small, okay, are these x-rays, for instance? Okay, x-rays, the example given here is the, the size of a hydrogen atom. Okay, that's the repeating unit of an x-ray. Amazing. Okay, um, so one thing, in case I forget to say it, is all of these, you can see these kind of radiation, these, these forms of radiation have this wave-like feature, okay? And all cousins actually travel through space, okay? And if there's no particles in the space, if the space is a vacuum, they travel at the speed of light, okay? They all travel at the speed of light, okay? And the variable for the speed of light is C, okay? So they're all booking through space. Some of them are tiny, okay? Some of them are long. Well, then kind of related to that, they're all traveling at the same speed, very fast, okay? But they have different uh, lengths, means that the number that pass a goalpost, okay, in, for instance, a, one second, is gonna be different. So the number of cycles that pass um, a, a particular point in one second is called um, the hertz, 
Okay, cycles per second is a hertz. Okay, that's, and so when we talk about the frequency, okay, we're talking about the number that passed in one second. So 1001. How many cycles did we get? Well, if you're talking gamma rays, okay, that are very short, okay, you got 10 to the 20th. Okay, so this that had a very short wavelength, okay, has a very great frequency, okay, traveling at the speed of light, 10 to the 20th. Wow, that's, that's a one with... Eight, nine. Okay. I gave it 20 zeros. I think that'll work. Okay. It's that many cycles in one second. You're like, dude. Okay. And then over here, when we had the longest wavelength, actually we have the shortest frequency. I know it, it doesn't sound, it doesn't sound short. 10 to the sixth is what, 1 million? Okay, it doesn't sound short, but it is. Okay, 1,001. And so, according to um, the distance of about 100 meters, traveling at the speed of light, okay, you get 1 million cycles past a goalpost, which is a lot less than that other. So, in general, um, these here at the longer wavelengths, they're longer wavelengths and they're lower frequencies. Okay, over here, we have shorter wavelengths and higher frequencies. So the last two columns are pretty cool. Uh, rows, excuse me. This row actually says on Earth, where are some sources, or where will we maybe generally kind of see some of these energies? And here at the shorter wavelengths, um, uh, radioactive, when, when, atom, when atoms decay, they can actually give some of this charged energy. Um, x-rays, we are gamma rays or x-rays. We use x-rays to penetrate flesh and see pictures of bones. Okay, visible a light bulb. Um, here we have actually people ooze um, infrared radiation. I usually tell students, um, of course, infrared IR is abbreviation for infrared. And what kind of works well is this is actually a type of heat signature. And then we have kind of an assortment of things dealing with those longer wavelengths. But the last row I think is so cool. And it kind of is important to take to heart as to why do we care about these different types of energies. And the answer is that we scientists understand phenomenon that is happening in our universe. And there are often times that the phenomenon that ha is happening or the stellar object of interest will give us these different types of energies, or emit these different types of energies. So, um, for instance, um, a gamma ray burst would be an indication of a very energetic event. Um, when black holes feed, feed, excuse me, when black holes are kind of feasting on things, uh, things that are getting ready to fall down the black hole form what we call an accretion disk and emit energy in the X-ray region of energies. Um, when we're looking at the sun. Um, solar science is very important science. Um, NASA's on it. <laughs> but uh, we need to look at not only visible light that the sun is sending at us, but also all different types of energy to understand what's going on with regard to the sun. Um, then we have some kind of longer wavelength um, uh, information that, that's important to us to understand the universe. One of my favorite actually is the um, cosmic microwave background. Um, and this is long wavelength, and actually, this this these these are energies that were created during the um, during the very early on in our universe. So it's it's amazing. It is totally amazing. So um, we can kind of think of of kind of somebody wiggling a rope up there is kind of creating that uh, a standing wave. But these are waves that actually move in space. But you can see we can talk about crests and we can talk about troughs. And a wavelength is, is where you start with, for instance, a crest and come back to the crest. That would be wavelength where you go trough to trough. So, but the other thing, and it's called kind of the dual nature of, of light, or the dual nature. In general, when we talk about light, we're talking about all of the cousins, seems like to me. So the dual nature of electromagnetic radiation is that it not only travels in waves like that, but it also travels in part particles, particulates. So you can kind of see those little E's, okay? Those are representing photons of energy. 
I just think that is amazing. Little packets of energy that actually the photons will be different depending upon the cousin. Okay. Um, they will have a different amount of energy. So it's just amazing. Let's see what else do we have? Okay. The dual nature of, of, um, of light or electromagnetic radiation. I'm going to just kind of reiterate. It says electromagnetic radiation moves through space like a wave. And I'm going to say at the speed of light. All cousins do that. Now that's assuming that it's traveling in a vacuum, outer space. Um, the it will travel slower in mediums that have um, that are not a vacuum. So the one last thing I kind of want to talk about is this idea of, of a, a given energy, a given cousin, okay, whether it's light or gamma rays or radio waves. Um, we talk in terms of narrowing it down to that energy's wavelength and frequency. And actually they are paired together. I'll show you how this works. So um, remember, anytime you see a hertz, that's cycles per second. But um, we're going to look at three different wavelengths. Okay, three different energies, and notice that the the frequency is pretty high. So um, we're going to talk. We're going to put the prefix giga. Giga means one billion. So here, thirty gigahertz means thirty billion cycles per second. Okay. Notice I'm going to call this a, and we have a wavelength. That's something you can actually sink your sink your teeth into. Wavelength of it's not a football field, and it's not a hydrogen atom. It's one centimeter. Okay. So what happens then if we compare A to B? Okay, notice what B is relative to A is we have taken it and now we have, we have taken this wavelength and made it into half. Okay, so for wherever there was just one cycle, now there's two cycles. Okay, so 0.5 centimeters of the wavelength. Notice what that did to the frequency. Now per second, we have 60 gigahertz per second. Is that not cool? Does that not make sense? Yes, it does. Okay, and the third, um, the third energy I want to show you, compared to the first one, it's um, uh, the wavelength is shortened by a factor of, of four. It's one fourth. The wavelength is one fourth of what it was, 0.25 centimeters versus one centimeter. So notice what that did with regard to frequency. Is it up the frequency by a factor of four? Okay, so now instead of 30 gigahertz, we have 120 gigahertz. So this is just kind of somewhat randomly taking um, three different wavelengths. Okay, so the shorter the wavelength, kind of shorted, um, the, the greater the frequency, and quite honestly, the more the energy. So there's this little formula that works for all of the cousins. Basically, um, it's set in stone. If you know the frequency, you automatically know the wavelength. If you know the wavelength, you automatically know, know the frequency because all of these are traveling at the speed of light. And if for any energy you were to take its lambda, its frequency, sorry, its lambda, its wavelength, okay, times F, its frequency, you would get the speed of light. Isn't that cool?